Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here with Will and Bobby shooting videos today. Uh, this is basically a response to a question I've been getting a lot lately. Uh, people like to see kit videos. And what was it, probably two months or so ago, we were down at one of our southern locations and we did a video about just a bunch of random stuff. And I just showed my VanQuest uh, Ibex 30 72 hour bag. I didn't get into it and people have been asking me what I put in it. Now here's the thing. This is what always leads to people going back and forth in the comments section. There is, is, there never will be one single way to set up a kit. It is so individualized. There are thousands of variables. Your skill, uh, who your dependents are, where you live, the time of year, uh, I mean, what situations you're prepping for. I mean, it's, it's just millions of variables. And that's why I'm always, nothing never stays the same with me. I'm always tweaking my kits. I'm always trying new things and seeing if I can crack the code of what I think like the perfect kit for me is. So this one right here, this is what I consider my 72 hour bag. This is one that I keep set up in my garage or if I'm traveling in the back of my SUV or whatever that it's just got what I need in it and I can make do with what's in here it's a little bit of everything not everything is set up for the woods but I'm gonna go ahead and open it up show you what's in it and the whole reason we do videos like this is not to tell you that this is the way to do it it's just to give you ideas it's to get you thinking, it's like, oh, I didn't think about putting that in there, or no, I probably wouldn't do that, so on and so forth. But the key thing is, it's got to be versatile, it's got to cover a lot of different things in it, and it can't be so heavy that you can't actually go out and hike with it. Like, I've, I've hiked a couple miles with this before, with no problems. Put too much weight in it, you're hurting your back and, and things like that, because this bag is not a load-bearing hiker's pack uh, where the, the weight is resting on your hips. But, like I said, this is just meant to be a, an emergency kit to, to cover a wide variance of situations. So if you want to see what's inside of it, don't go away. Okay, so I got this uh, grabber all-weather blanket is actually part of this kit, so you won't see it on the inside, but I just threw it out here so we can lay everything out and everything be nice and visible. So this is a VanQuest Ibex 30 with uh, two VanQuest packs attached to the outside. You've got the, the large fat pack over here, and then you've got the FTIM maximizer over on this side. So obviously on the front back, I've got my number one tool for the outdoors. That's my Jessica X. I'm caught up here. So I'll put it in the, uh, the shock cord and I'll lock it down with the molly clips and all that stuff. But this does have obviously a sling, so I'll just put the sling up in this pocket. That way when it's get to where I'm going, then I can go ahead and hook it up and put it on. So there's my primary chopping, batoning, woods processing tool, uh, fire starter, light, all that's right there. I usually stuff these things full of uh, wet wipes too, just because I've learned having kids the value of a good wet wipe. <laughs> Out in the woods, you got to clean your hands up before you eat, something like that. It's just, they just always come in handy. So let's deal with the med pack first. Basically, this one here, and the reason it's on the outside is this is my trauma kit. I've covered this. I've got a couple of these set up like this, but you slip with something, whatever. This one, I've got a cat tourniquet. I've got uh, the Curlex gauze, 
I've got a trauma bandage in here. Gauze, I've got more gauze. I've got the ACE bandage. So I've got everything for compressible and non-compressible arterial bleeding. Got uh, eye washes, something in your eyes. And then down here, this is removable pouch. That's where I've got some of the smaller stuff. You know, prescription meds, ibuprofen, which I wouldn't be filming right now if it weren't for ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> screw my back up you know the small stuff the band-aids steri strips you know for instead of sutures you know all, just the common stuff but I want that ow rocks <laughs> I want that easy to open I want it on the outside of my bag so if something happens I need fast access to this stuff because I mean this is the stuff arterial bleeding that can kill you in minutes so you don't want to screw around with it being stuffed down okay now i gotta empty out my backpack and all that stuff no you want that on the outside i just picked this spot to put a a, a night eye figure nine for setting up ridge lines and stuff like that now on the other side i've got the ftim maximizer this is kind of like my little toolkit. i want this on the outside uh, so i don't have to constantly be getting into my pack for little common things So that's basically my fast ridgeline kit. I use ridgelines all the freaking time, even if I'm not setting up a shelter. If I'm gonna be in a spot in the woods for a long time, I might set up a ridgeline just so I can hang my stuff off of it with carabiners and not lose it. But also with these tarp clips, I can utilize my heat sheet blanket and build shelters and things like that. Some of the other stuff that's in here, I've got a small Nightcore headlamp, I've got a Leatherman Surge, I've got some uh, Tenacious Tape, which is like the greatest thing in the world for repairing things. Small fishing kit, a whistle for signaling, uh, Havilon Peranta Z with extra blades, compass, uh, through night TC12, and the reason this one is in here is because it's USB rechargeable. Extra USB cords, because uh, I'll usually have an anchor battery in the back of my pack too. It's currently out being used at the moment. That's just a, a VanQuest uh, Molly stick that I used to wrap up some uh, bank line. And then if I absolutely need to field sharpen or just tune something up, this is a Smith's diamond sharpener. I generally will only use the fine. I don't want to use coarse stuff on my knives. But then I, I added some leather to each side, loaded it with two types of strop compounds. So I can kind of tune things up with that. So there's that. Now let's get the main pack open. All right, let's open this bag up. Make sure I got the straps undone. This is one of the main reasons I like this pack so much. Is I can just open the whole thing up and access everything. that fell out um, this is some this is about 25 feet of am steel that I got for a project I just kind of kept it uh, cordage is important but this is like super cordage this is what they make whoopee slings out of it's a 1200 pound test so that could always come in handy that's usually stuffed right here that's where I keep my hidden woodsman signal panel uh, in the bottom this is my fire kit I've got my ferro rod over here, but fire is one of those things, if you've ever watched alone, you don't want to have one. Because <laughs> when you lose that, then you're kind of screwed. So that's where I keep my small lightning strike fire starter. And then in this bag, there's some extra uh, starting material for that. I got some zip kerosene blocks. That's one of my favorite fire starters. And then I've just got like an Altoids tin kit that's full of things like uh, Tinder Quicks, Wet Fire, Zippo, Wax Sticks, uh, uh, Fatwood, alcohol prep pads. Usually this has got a little bit more stuff in it, but I was messing around with it. So that's just a little, that's the fire kit. Keep a 32 ounce stainless steel bottle so I can actually boil with it, but you don't want to waste space. So 
inside there, that's on the, that's my preferred packable filter. That's a Renovo Trio. And then I also filled up the extra space with some paracord. It also keeps it from rattling and making noise while it's in there. So for a saw, I switched out the saws. Uh, I did have Silky Gomboy in there. This is now my new favorite saw after yesterday. This thing is freaking amazing. Uh, this is the Silky Zubat. So for a shelter, generally this is folded up inside of it. But then I've got, I mean these are like two bucks. I've got two 9x12 uh, plastic drop cloths. And then I've got a uh, Mylar sleeping bag. Cooking, boiling water. Uh, that's just an ember lit stove right there. And the biggest reason to have something like that, people are like, well, I'll just use a campfire. Well, simple. Uh, if you've got limited resources, it's like dry wood, you can be a lot more efficient with that little bit of wood with something like this than an open campfire where all that heat energy is going out in every single direction. So especially if you're just trying to have like a small warming fire by a small shelter, just put it in this, works really, really well. Oh, I do have my other saw in here. Oh, crap. Well, I don't need two saws in here. <laughs> but uh, this is my Corona saw. For people on a budget, this is the saw I always recommend you get. They're 17 bucks at Lowe's. They work outstanding. And it's curved like the Zubat. So if you still want a folding saw, this is always the one I'm going to tell you to buy. For tent stakes, making, staking things out, doing a lot of different things, I just like the aluminum tent stakes. They're like three bucks for six or eight of them at uh, Harbor Freight. They don't break. Those plastic ABS ones, especially in the winter, they break, they shatter. I keep a dry bag. This is probably a five liter dry bag. Uh, if it's raining, I want to put my electronics, my phone or whatever in there. I can use this for collecting water. You know, a lot of different things that you can do with your dry bag. I always have a pair of gloves. Now I keep Jessica X on the outside, but I do keep a redundant blade on the inside that I can do a lot with. And this is generally, the, the Benchmade Jungle Bowie is the one that I generally put in my kit. Uh, it's great. I can do fine tasks, big tasks. I can chop, I can baton, I can strike things off the, the spine. So this is not one that I generally carry with me just to go out in the woods. I'm going to carry my Jessmic or something like that, but for something in a pack that I can do a lot with. And this could be whatever knife you want to put in here. It doesn't have to be this one. A $100, you know, whatever. Just have a, have a redundant blade in your pack that you're comfortable with. Uh, I, like I said, I don't have my anchor battery because it's over there charging a camera right now, but I do keep one of the, the newer anchor solar panels in here. I've got it kind of strapped up right now. In the event that that uh, battery runs out or whatever, renewable source, and you can take that anchor battery and hang, you know, plug this in, hang it off the back of your backpack while you're hiking, so you're storing all that power when you're not using it. Now when we get to what's here, this is where my pack starts to differ from what a lot of people put in their emergency kits. When I see a lot of emergency kits on, on YouTube and stuff like that, I very rarely see any calories. And that's the thing that you're going to need the most. So these pouches right here, these come from a Condor VA7 pack organizer. But they got the Velcro back, so I stick them in this bag. So we've got Sloppy Joe filling, MREs, Pro Bars, Pro Bars, Cliff Bars, Protein Bars. Pro bars, electrolytes, dehydration, a little endurance gel, some green tea, some more cliff bars. Come over to this one. 
Now we've talked about this in the past. If you if you haven't seen it, look up uh, uh, some of the videos. I'll put it in the description box below. Some videos I've done on thinking about using like sports supplements and stuff like that for emergency kits. Uh, Post workout recovery drink. You know, you're out doing whatever, building shelters. You're going to need to recuperate. So having something like that to drink is going to help you a lot. Just having food that you can warm up. There's some more MREs. So I've got three MRE meals. We've got some MRE peanut butter and a little bit of cheese spread. And another one of these endurance gels. So that's, I mean, I can stretch that out quite a bit. Uh, easily, and for this being a 72 hour kit, I mean, that's smoothing it for 72 hours. So always think about having calories in your emergency pack. And then the one other thing that I pouch that I have up here, this is just a hygiene kit. So the stuff that I put in here, this stuff works amazing out in the woods and it lasts forever. It's this uh, crystal deodorant. You just uh, get it wet and I mean this stuff works amazing. Now this is a small pack, so I don't have any clothes, you know, extra clothes or anything in here. So I can actually take some of this laundry wash in my dry bag, and I can wash my clothes because there's a bunch of not just because your clothes are dirty, but you get skin and you get things in there, and it, it reduces the ability for it to breathe. You chafe; it causes pain. Pain causes think, you know, stuff in your mind makes it harder to think, makes it harder to process stuff. So, I mean, this is not just a Billy Badass, so I can just live out in the woods, you know, naked. I mean, clean your stuff. You'll be able, you'll be fresher, you'll think better, you'll be more effective. And just basic hygiene, I mean, just for cleaning your hands when you eat or after processing something. And I just keep a, a bandana in there to help with that. And I need to clean my face or whatnot out in the woods where it's really freaking crazy i don't normally use mosquito repellent but if it's really freaking crazy that's like the craziest you can get that's the 100 percent that's the 100 deep is it 100 percent yeah night this will actually if you overuse this on your skin it'll burn uh use it use deep sparingly but spray it like on your your shirt or whatever uh, and then I just threw a little, that's uh, Dr. Bronner's eucalyptus uh, hemp soap. So you can use this for everything. And then just a toothbrush. I forget, I think I got that at like emergency essentials. So it's a toothbrush, it's got the toothpaste in it. And just comes out the, br the bristles. Uh, I mean, staying clean. It's just the stuff that people don't really think about. They don't put that much importance on it. And I think the reason why they don't is because they haven't actually gone out and tested themselves. The best way to know what you need to put in your personal emergency pack is to go out for a day or two with your limited pack and that's all you take. And you will quickly find out what's missing. Because you'll be like, oh, I need to do this. And it's like, crap, I don't have paracord. Or crap, I don't have that. Or crap, I wear contacts. I don't have my extra glasses or extra contacts. Yeah, usually there is a little kit for that in here too. That is in another bag. That's that's in that, uh, that VanQuest uh, Envoy 3.0. But I should probably put one of those in there too, if that's all I had. So... Anything else in here? I think I got one other pocket in here. Oh, the only thing in this pocket is just a little book that I basically did an inventory of everything that I keep in this kit. So I can kind of, if I take something out or I replace it, I scratch it out. That's why I kind of always know what's in here. You'd be surprised how many times I make a kit and then I'm looking for something and then later on it's like, where the hell is that thing? Oh, I, I put it in a kit. So that's what I've got in this bag. So it's good to go through those bags every once in a while like I just did. Uh, I do notice some things missing like, uh, where's my duct tape? I didn't see that in there. 
Uh, other things I noticed by doing that is, well, I've got that, since I set that bag up, now I have that new Yellowhawk uh, Jessica X sheath. Well, that has a compass on the back of it. So I don't need the compass in my bag. You know, certain things I like to be heavy redundancies on with uh, like tools, knives. I'm just tool heavy. I'm a prepper. That's my methodology. That's the way it works for me personally. Uh, may not be the way that works for you. But, uh, you know, I don't need, I probably don't need two compasses. Not only that, but I've got what's on my body. So I've got my Jessmic on and, you know, Doug put a compass on that one too, attached to the ferro rod loop. So in addition to what is in that pack, you also got to consider, well, what am I usually going to have on my body too? So concealed carry firearm, whatever my everyday carry fixed blade is. Probably going to have a Leatherman uh, signal multi-tool. So realistically, I could probably lose the Surge too. I like having the Surge in the 72-hour kit because I can add those extra saws to it. Uh, any kind of T-shank saw I can add to the Surge. Uh, you know, when I go out here nowadays, we haven't done a video on this one. Probably get Hector's view on it because, uh, like, I've got a SWAT T tourniquet. And, and these are like the elastic uh, stretch ones. You know, people are always going to opt for the better tourniquets. But this one, what I like about this one is it's so small, it's simple, and it'll fit in your back pocket. So there's no reason not to have a tourniquet on you. And it's one of the biggest things that'll kill you quick is some sort of arterial bleeding. So what have you done to prepare for that? Well, I got that now. You know, this, that, and the other thing, whatever you got. But you will never build the perfect kit, ever. There's always going to be something missing. So you also don't want to overdo it. And then you've got too much to carry, uh, too, many, too many redundancies. Now, I've got a little bit of extra space. That is not loaded. There's a little bit of extra space in that pack. What I could do, I could put a hammock in there, too with those uh, Helios uh, suspension systems. So, and I'll be comfortable. You know, sleep is very important, you know, in an emergency. If you can sleep, if you can recuperate, you can think better, you can process things better, and just be overall more successful. But the thing is, just keep trying stuff. Just put things together, maybe go out, uh, test it for a weekend, see how that kit works for you. Try it a different way. Try doing it without it, you know. So take a couple things out of it and be like, okay, force yourself to improvise. So you, you should always, you know, I'm all about the gear, but I'm also able to kind of think outside the box and improvise if I need to. You know, that's where the skills come in. There's no one way to do everything. But it, kit building is a fun exercise because it forces you to think. Uh, it forces you to, to think about all the potential things based on your environment, what your skill level is, what your physical abilities are, and it, you just keep getting better and better at it. There's no one, one way to do everything. But that just shows you what is currently in my 72-hour bag right now. That's not the bag I take out in the woods. That's one that is set up and it's left like that. Maybe it's in my garage, maybe it's in my car. It depends. It depends on what I have with me. I got stuff. I can build. I can literally build that bag out of what is in my vehicle in the hidden compartments. And there's a backpack in there too. And I can, it's just like a little mini survival store in my car. It's like, okay, here's my backpack. Let me take this. Let me take that. So, trust me. Will, have we ever like been hurting for? Hey, we don't have one of these. Oh. I, Pull one out of my ass. Here we go. Pull one out of your ass. Okay. <laughs> and I don't really store things. In your prison purse? Right. In prison. Oh. <laughs> never heard. I've never been to prison, so. Well, neither have I, but still. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> so, okay, I think I've talked long enough. I'm Christian Prepared My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. A lot of this stuff uh, you can find in my Amazon store, preparedmy101.com. That goes a long way to help support the channel. All right, be back with another video here soon, so see you then.